everyone, thanks for coming. This is the How to Use Volunteers in Civi CRM session. My name is Frank Gomez. Um, I uh, am with Ginkgo Street Labs based out of Washington, DC. Um, and I'm one of the maintainers of Civi Volunteer. <clears throat> uh, every time I give one of these talks, I kind of do this like preamble at the beginning and I can tell no one cares and they just want me to get to like showing them the tool and doing the demo. So I'm just going to ju jump right into it. And um, the idea here is we're going to talk about how to set up a volunteer program um, and kind of the whole uh, <laughs> life cycle of a volunteer event and, um, and just kind of how to, how to use CiviCRM to build up a, a volunteer program. Um, so I've got a demo site here. And um, I've already gone ahead and installed Civi Volunteer, but if um, if you've never done that before, getting some errors here because I'm offline and other weird things. Um, it's easy to do right from the Manage Extensions page, and uh, Civi Volunteer will just show up in this list, and all you have to do is is click Install. Um, so the first, uh, the first part I'm going to walk through is how to uh, get a list of people that you can call on um, to do stuff for you. Uh, so when you install Civi Volunteer, uh, this feature is new in version 1.4, which came out last week. Um, there's a new screen. Um, which is accessible at a nice, pretty URL. Um, this is basically just a, a profile. Um, but instead of all the question marks and the ampersands in your URL, you can just point people to civicrm slash volunteer slash join. Um, and so this is configurable. Uh, we can change these fields, and we will. And um, I just want to talk a little bit about the approach that Civi Volunteer takes. Um, <coughs> This is something that you could do yourself. You don't need uh, an extension to set up a profile for you. Um, we're trying to play as close as we can to CiviCRM's core functionality um, and leverage as much of what's already in the system as, as we can. So really, we're trying to package things up to make it easy um, for folks to get started. Uh, and there are times where we have to add things that aren't already in CiviCRM. Uh, but as much as we can, we try to play it close to uh, close to core. Um, so I can change uh, this screen by going to Profiles. <coughs> and um, we've introduced a reserved profile called Notify Me of Volunteer Opportunities. And um, we can change the fields uh, or make some required or not required as we like. So we're going to go ahead and add a few fields so that you can see uh, what that's like. And you'll see here, um, uh, if, if you're familiar with profiles, and, and hopefully I'm assuming you have a, 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 some knowledge of, of CiviCRM. Um, so the field that we're adding is part of a new, vol uh, a new contact subtype, uh, which is volunteer. Um, and this is added to your system by Civi Volunteer as of version 1.4. And um, so what are some questions we want to ask people? In this example, um, I'm going to set up, um, I'm going to set it up as if we were an organization who is uh, media-based. So um, we need volunteer camera operators. Uh, we need volunteer uh, lighting engineers or whatever they're called. I, I don't really do this kind of stuff. Um, and so by updating our profile, let me just have a new window here. We've updated, um, we've updated our, our screen. And let's have a look at that. 
over here. Um, it looks like I've discovered a bug, which always happens when you're giving a presentation. <laughs> Let me see. So what I wanted to show you was a new widget that we added um, to Civi CRM. And um, in this volunteer information group, we have some custom fields um, that we've defined. And oh, OK. Uh, it's not a bug. It's a misconfig. So uh, actually, let me do that a little slower so you can see what I'm doing. Um, so we added this new widget, uh, which I have named Slider Selector. It could probably use a better name. Um, and I've, I've provided some help here to kind of explain what it does. Um, rather than make you read that tiny text, I'm going to show you uh, what we're after here. So as you can see, camera skill level and lighting skill level are um, they're just multi-select fields, right? So I can select multiple options. Um, but if I refresh this, I get this cool slider now. Um, and the idea is uh, we're allowing people to rate their skills on a continuum. Um, so when I pull this up, um, it will start at not specified, but um, you know I can say, I'm not really interested in camera skills, or um, teach me, or you know, all the way to I'm a master. And, um, and of course, these labels are configurable. So if you don't like master or, or novice or whatever we call them, you can change those. Um, so what's happening here behind the scenes is when I slide all the way over to master, I'm selecting all of these options, not interested, teach me, apprentice, journeyman, and master. And so when I am, uh, so that when the user is providing that data to you, they're selecting all of those items. When the administrator searches behind the scenes, um, I need someone who has apprentice level lighting skills for this event. And um, people who have said that they're masters should qualify, right? Because a master can do an apprentice's job. Um, so this is a nice little uh, way to make it easier for your potential volunteers to provide information about you that you can use um, in a meaningful way. Um, and uh, so you can see that just by ticking that little box, I can turn this on or off. So if, if I want to have fields in here that are not um, sliders and I want to have a, a true multi-select, I can do that as well. Um, so let's go ahead and, and actually fill out this form here. Uh, but let's do it as an anonymous user here so that I'm not overwriting my own information. OK. So now when we come back in, um, we can search for Johnny Dangerously. And um, by virtue of filling out that form, which had a, a volunteer field on it, um, he's tagged as a, a contact type of volunteer. And um, the information that is related to volunteers shows up only for your volunteer contact types. Um, so you, custom fields are great, but they can really like bloat your, your user interface and um, you know, a year into using your system, you might find you have like a list this long of custom fields. Um, so what we've done is we've put them on this volunteer contact subtype so that um, they don't show up all over Civi CRM. They just show up for people who are volunteers. And you can have multiple contact subtypes. So if you have someone who's a volunteer and a teacher or a, a student or whatever, um, you can, you're not losing anything there. Any questions so far? Just had a question. I'm, I'm wondering, like, when I'm looking at the skill 
one level, it, it chose all of those not interested teachers. So are, am I gonna look at the last one and say he's a journeyman? I mean, it, it's almost like he's got, it seems confusing, it says it's not interested, you know, so you've got that field in there for him. And you also have journeyman. I mean, it, it's almost problematic that you have each one of those levels. Yeah, the, How do you discern which one it really is? Is it the last one? So, the list? journeyman? Right, so we're, we're kind of grading people on a continuum. Mm -hmm. um, so not interested is maybe not exactly on the same continuum as novice, uh, apprentice, and, and master. Um, but in some ways, it kind of is. So they, uh, right, so they're, they're really the, the true value is, is the last one. Um, but this is a mechanism for us to be able to see, um, or for us to be able to match on them when we're searching for you know, we don't need a master, we just need an apprentice. But if you searched on that, would that person come up, Johnny, would he come up under not interested, teach me, apprentice, and journeyman? Right, would so... Would he come up under all of those? He would, yeah. Uh, and I think that's a strength. And um, the only one that's a little uh, confusing there maybe is, is not interested. Uh, but the options in the list are totally configurable. So if you don't like that one, you can take it out. Um, and so this is the... The whole idea is you're looking for people who are qualified for something. Mm -hmm, so mm -hmm. yeah, if you were trying to identify people that needed more training, it's not exactly designed for that, but that, that's why. Mm -hmm. okay. This is the also the first uh, iteration of this slider widget. Um, so in some of the interfaces, uh, we've decided that it's better for you to see all of the values um, rather than just. Rather than just uh -huh. And I think we're going to kind of play that by feel and get feedback from people about what works for them and what doesn't and, and adjust accordingly. Yeah. Um, I think it's a cool thing that you've developed. But I think not interested just threw me a little bit because I feel like that's like I almost say beginner or something like that. Sure. Yeah. But that's customizable, so I didn't like it. I yes, it. exactly. Was there a confirmation page for the volunteer where it actually showed all those tags? Uh, that's a good question. That could be a little confusing. Yep, so there it is. It, it's showing all of the tags. So that might be something that, um, that we, we clean up. Okay, um, so next I'm going to move on to creating a volunteer event. And um, City Volunteer has been written largely around uh, managing volunteers as related to events. And uh, we are expanding the use cases for that. Uh, but really where it's strongest right now is managing events, or, or I'm sorry, volunteers related to an event. Uh, so that's what I'm going to show you. <clears throat> Uh, so we'll go ahead and create a new event here, and um, whatever. Let's make this uh, an exhibition. Uh, so don't be confused by the volunteer here in the participant listing. Uh, that comes from uh, Civi Serum Core, and it doesn't have anything to do with Civi Volunteer. Civi Volunteer doesn't actually presently register uh, contacts as participants in your event. Um, it's, it's kind of a separate thing. And we're, we're thinking about giving the people, people the option to like check a flag so that they can be registered as well. Um, but I think we're thinking of this a little bit more like they're your event staff uh, and your event participants are like you guys and, and, and me, like people who are at the conference. And of course, there's, there's overlap there. But um, so I'll just go ahead and uh, so in our example here, since we're pretending to be a media organization, this is going to be a Humane Society PSA shoot. Um, so we're shooting a commercial for our, our local Humane Society. And I don't really care too much about any of this other stuff. Um, so I'll go ahead and hit continue. And um, so you can see I've got allow online registration turned off because we're just not going to be using um, that here. Uh, 
So for volunteers, this is a new tab that uh, Civi Volunteer adds to Civi Serum. And um, we're going to go ahead and enable uh, volunteer management for this event. And this, uh, so we try to put as much in-app help as we can um, throughout the app. So when you get a weird thing like select beneficiary, what the heck does that mean? Uh, you can click the, the question mark to learn a little bit more about what's happening. Um, so basically, in, in this case, um, we're shooting a PSA for the Humane Society. And uh, in that case, our beneficiary is going to be the Humane Society. And I can just create that on the fly. And um, so folks who are managing, um, or folks who are using activities in Civi Serum will have seen that there are a lot of different contacts associated with an activity. There's an assignee. There's um, the with contact. And so what we're doing here is we're, we're setting, um, Civi Volunteer is, is in, in some ways, a big wrapper around activities. Uh, it does a lot more than that. but at the end of the day, um, all of the, the the majority of the data is represented as activities, and so uh, this is setting the uh, one of the contacts on the activity, um, so that we know kind of who's involved in in uh, in everything. So let me go ahead and do that, and. Um, Next, we're going to go ahead and define our needs for this event. And um, so if I'm shooting a commercial, maybe I need, I don't know, two camera operators. And um, we're really efficient, so this is just going to take 60 minutes. And um, who even knows what a gaffer is? And we need um, some lighting engineers. and. We're going to pick a high number because uh, we're shooting in total darkness and we need a lot of lighting engineers. <laughs> OK, and um, let's, let's, so this list, um, you might be wondering, you know, what is this? How do I change it? Uh, my organization doesn't have camera operators and gaffers and lighting engineers. Um, enter once again the question mark, and uh, it tells you how you can go ahead and uh, modify that list. And so we'll open this up in a new window. And um, so this is going to be a really wild commercial. We're going to have stunt people. And I'm going to need to refresh this. And um, whatever, two stunt people. And um, OK, so now I've, I've, um, I've set up kind of what I'm asking for. This is, this is what we're doing. This is how many people I need. And um, you'll see that there's a relationship here between um, all of these things and um, our sign-up form that was created for us um, just by virtue of enabling volunteer. So if we jump to the event info, um, this looks better if you fill in more details than I did. Uh, hit the Volunteer Now button, and something doesn't look right. What did I do wrong? This time it does look like a bug and not human error. I don't think the dates matter. Sorry? Uh, no, that shouldn't be, shouldn't, okay. 
I think it was, so there's a bug. Um, I think it was because I had uh, some shifts in here that were zero minutes long. Um, so why don't you jot that down as something we should look at. <laughs> OK, so um, that checkbox that you were asking about allowed users to sign up without specifying a shift. That is for this uh, I'm flexible volunteer role. Um, and uh, for some events, you don't really have very specific roles, or um, there might not be a, a prerequisite that's required to have you know, someone. If, you, if you're going to have someone operating a camera, they should have some experience. But if you have someone um, at a welcome table at a conference, um, probably almost anyone will do. Um, so I'm flexible is, is helpful for that. Um, I can also, so I can turn that off. And instead, we get our volunteer roles. And um, it looks like I, I still have a, a little problem here, because only my the date. Yeah. That's the only one you move Huh. Are you taking notes, Michael? Yeah. <laughs> OK, that's interesting. Um, I haven't run into this before. Um, so. Right, so I can, I can have uh, people choose their role, and if the role has multiple times, they can choose those. And um, you know, if the, the lighting engineer only had one time, so uh, they only have one choice. Um, and there's some other interesting things here. There might be some roles that your event has that you don't want the general public to sign up for, uh, like Cameras are expensive. Maybe you don't want um, JoQ Public signing up. You still want to uh, be able to use Civi uh, Volunteer to fill this need, but maybe you don't want people signing up for it. So if I uncheck this box, okay. Oh, that's why. Yeah. Thank you. Okay, good. <laughs> um, Right, so I can I can tailor my sign up form uh, like that. Uh, I remember what it is. Um, okay, so we have um, defined our needs. Um, we've seen how that affects the public sign up form that people can use to sign up for my event, and um, so you'll notice there are also these other fields in here that have nothing to do with the role. This first name, last name, email. Um, you know, maybe you work uh, with a community that doesn't use email very much, so this field isn't important to you. Uh, we can change that too. Um, and this is actually also new in Civi Volunteer 1.4 is uh, before we, we let you customize those fields, but it was the same for all of your volunteer projects. So if you have vastly different volunteer projects, like you know, river cleanup and um, shooting PSAs, like those are very different. You might want to ask very different questions of people. So uh, now you can do that. And you can even use multiple profiles. And if we save that and refresh our public form, um, so we've got the volunteer sign up and um, some some other junk. Um, so it's, this is my little joke since we have a stuntman in our in our shoot. Um, can you change the profile based on the role? Can you change the pro no because the role isn't selected um, until um, I mean currently there isn't anything like that. Uh, I suppose with a little more coding, we could hide and show different fields uh, based on the role. But currently, um, whatever you select, these fields are constant. Where do you go to change that? You know, the terminology, I'm flexible, on that drop down that you put in. Can, if you wanted to change that level, um, You'd have to make a small code customization. Oh, okay. um, so it's just yeah, it's. It would be really, it's, it's really easy to make. It's a one-liner. Um, but it's not uh, accessible via the UI yet. I was, I was about to say, um, there, oh, yeah, it's, you know, the, the, I think um, 
Ixium in Spain um, translated this to Spanish. Um, so you could translate I'm flexible to whatever you want. OK, and let's go ahead and sign up for this event. Um, should have done that before I added so many fields. OK. So now coming back to um, coming back to the point of view of someone who's organizing the event, um, screen is a little small, so this is getting a little crowded, but let me spread it out. Um, so this is uh, these are the needs that we've said that we need, and um, these are all the people who have signed up for various needs. Um, on the, that left column that says available volunteers, if someone, if you have the I'm flexible enabled and someone signs up as I'm flexible, they'll show up on, in the available volunteers and then you can just drag them to wherever you like. Um, another way that you can use this is um, anyone working with nonprofits knows that not all of your constituency is internet friendly or savvy. So they might hear about this and call you on the phone and say, um, Bob signs up and he wants to um, be, a, be a stunt person, sure. So I just drag him over, drop him, good, one more needed. And um, you know, we can do that uh, ad nauseum. And so now the stunt person position is filled and um, that annoying red bar goes away and you know that, that you're ready to move forward, at least as far as stunt people are concerned. Do those users get a notification that they've been added? No. Okay. Um, I'll talk more about notifications towards the end. Yeah. Sort of. Um, it's not, it can be enforced humanly. Uh, it's not programmatically enforced yet. Um, we're moving in that direction. Um, and I'll demo that in just a minute, um, kind of how that works. Uh, was there another hand that went up? Yeah, if those people that you manually added aren't already in your database, do you first have to go create like, profiles for them? Um, so if I wanted to add someone who wasn't in my database, I could just pop open this and um, and put them wherever I like. I'm sorry? If you've now got two of two for stump people on, on your sign-up form. Right. Um, so on the form, it will be hidden. So the, the need is met. Um, so we won't see any more stunt persons. Um, and it, you know, if if you, uh, I think some people want to always be accepting volunteers for an event, so it's good to leave the I'm flexible option turned on, so that if all of your positions are filled and people still want to volunteer, you have a place to put them, and uh, and you don't have to turn them away. Can you add more people to that if it's all of the positions filled? Um, not from this interface. Could you go and just go back to the configuration of it and increase the number? That would be the that would be the easiest way to do it is to just add another person to the add another number, increment by one, and then drag the people in, for sure. Um, okay, so so now we have a problem, right? Um, we need five lighting engineers, and, and we and we only have one. And um, so, uh, like I said, Civi Volunteer doesn't try to solve all of the problems or to reinvent things that are already in Civi CRM. Uh, we just try to package them up nicely and create new things that maybe should be there but aren't. Um, so for this, uh, we, don't, we don't need to go through Civi Volunteer. 
Um, we have uh, great tools in CV CRM already that we can do. So somebody was asking about prerequisites. And um, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to do an advanced search for um, attendees of lighting workshops. who have a participant status of attended. And if you, different organizations have different workflows, right? So um, s some orgs have like a pass fail or whatever of a, like a certification class. So you might change the status after someone um, participates to pass or fail. I haven't done anything like that. So I'm just going to use attended. And um, we'll do a search. And we'll find that I have a couple of people who have attended the lighting workshop. So uh, what I can do now is I can select these records and make a smart group. Um, we'll call it certified light folk. And I can make them a mailing list. Well, let's not do that. Um, so now using regular CV CRM tools, I have uh, an automatically updating list of people who uh, have passed this certification. And since I'm having trouble filling these last four roles, um, I could go through uh, uh, CV mail here and do a new mailing and select certified light folk as the target of my mailing and say, you know, we have this event, and we need more people. Um, and so that's one way to recruit more people um, to your cause and use the information that you already have in your CRM to know, you know who's likely to respond, that you know, they have an interest in lighting, they're qualified to do the job, as opposed to blasting your whole list every time you have a volunteer opportunity. People get kind of tired of that. Um, OK. so. Uh, the next thing we can do, suppose, um, sure, go ahead. Um, kind of similar to that, if you have, let's say, a contact form already where you have like a checkbox where people can say, I want to volunteer, mm -hmm. can you create a subgroup or a, I mean, a smart search that would just, a smart group that would just push people into the volunteer subtype? Um, I don't think there is an easy way to push people into the volunteer subtype. Uh, or to change contact types, um, like as a as a mass action, uh, I've tried and haven't found a way to do that. Um, it's it's not necessary that a person have the volunteer contact subtype to volunteer for one of your events. Um, it's mostly we're using that as a way to keep um, custom fields from exploding all over your website. <clears throat> um, okay, so let's go back to our event which is not that screen. <coughs> and um, right, so on this assignment interface, um, we have these lighting volunteers. Uh, or lighting position that we need to fill. So we can pop open this, and this is also new in version 1.4 of Civi Volunteer. Hit this uh, search icon. Should not be loading that long. Not found. Oh, this is disappointing. Let's just try a few quick things. Um, if it doesn't work, we'll we'll move on. What would the search have shown us? Sorry. What would the search have shown us? So what, what you would see is um, all of the custom fields that you've defined on the volunteer contact subtype, 
would show up on a search form and also a box for custom groups uh, or for groups rather and so I could that group that we just created that was people who are certified light engineers um, I could pull that up and get a list of everyone who matches and then there are check boxes next to everyone's name and um, uh, using that, I could go ahead and assign them to the role. So let's see if clearing caches. OK. Um, sorry about that. I'm not sure what's happening here. Um, OK, so let's see. We, we finish at 12.15, is that right? Yes. So I'm going to breeze through the rest of this. Um, Scheduled, someone was asking about um, how you communicate with volunteers to let them know. Um, um, let them know about volunteer commitments that they've made. Um, so if we go to administer communications, we have the schedule reminders functionality that's in core. And people get confused with this because Civi Volunteer is connected to events, but it's not really. Your volunteers are activity um, participants. So we can do on the entity here, uh, I'm sorry, on the activity, look for volunteers. And um, you know if they're scheduled, a day before the activity time, we can send them a message. Now, um, one of the limitations of this is that uh, the scheduled reminder doesn't have the context of your volunteer project. So <coughs> your message should be nice and generic. Like, you have, uh, we're looking forward to having you at our volunteer event tomorrow. Call Barbara at 555 whatever if you have questions. Um, I think in the next release, we'll pass a little more context to the scheduled reminder so that we can tell them you know, the name of the, of the event and um, uh, what role they have and that sort of thing. Um, but this may cover some use cases for folks, so I wanted to point it out. Um, so you couldn't do the scheduled reminder from the event itself? There wouldn't be a scheduled reminder tab on the event if it's a volunteer event? Well, normally you do have that scheduled reminder oh. tab. Yes, so unless your volunteers are also registered as event participants, okay. um, sure. there's, that's not going to help you. Um, OK, so I'm going to really fly through the rest of this, because there's some more stuff I wanted to get to. Um, at the end of your volunteer event, um, it's good to match up people's commitments with, uh, with their actual performance. So um, you know, if I said I was going to show up and I didn't, um, we could mark me as a, as a no-show. And if Bob uh, said he was going to be here for an hour and he was awesome and he stayed for two, um, I could set that. And um, if he was really exceptional, I might want to uh, give him a commendation here. A commendation, a volunteer commendation, is also um, a uh, another type of custom activity. Uh, so this will show up in your activity reports or um, on the contact dash under activities. Um, and um, now he's got a gold star, literally. <laughs> um, Right. Where do you view that comment? Is it in this contact record? Right. So if we pull up Bob's record and we look at the activities, um, so this is the record for his volunteer activity and this is for the commendation. And if I view that, um, the details say that he was great. <laughs> um, there are also some, uh, there's a Civi volunteer provided report, which you can use to see like how many hours a particular volunteer has contributed, or how many hours the organization as a whole has done over the last month. And you can do filtering by role or by beneficiary. So 
if your organization is kind of brokering volunteers to other organizations or to uh, other chapters, uh, you can do a, a report you know, by chapter. Um, I'm not going to show that uh, because of time and because it doesn't look too much different from other CIVI volunteer or CIVI serum reports. Um, so I did want to talk about, and I wanted more than one minute to do it, I did want to talk about um, CIVI volunteer 2.0. Some of you may have heard there was a large fundraising effort. Uh, an anonymous uh, donor offered a grant to the project, um, provided that the community matched a certain amount of fundraising. And uh, there was incredible community effort around that. And, uh, and we pulled it off. So we're going to add a, a lot more functionality to Civi Volunteer um, in the next several months. And um, so I've mocked up some ideas for that. And I wanted to share them. And we won't have time um, here to really discuss them and get feedback. But uh, I really am trying to recruit. Um, so usually these pitches are like, I need you to fund this work. And the great news is we have the funding. So um, we want um, beta participants. We want people to tell us how they're using um, Civi Serum to manage volunteers and where it's falling short. Uh, we want to understand, um, in particular, folks who are using uh, volunteers not in an event-centric way um, so that this next version serves you know, a, a greater uh, breadth of the community. So. Um, Right, so there, there's a series of birds of a feather meetings um, tomorrow at 1 o'clock. And um, we'll be doing one for Civi Volunteer. And that's a good way to start the conversation. Um, but I don't want it to end there. Um, I want your business card. And you can give that to me now so that we can have conversations later. Again, this, it's, it's already funded. So like, I'm not trying to sell you something. I, I want to know how to make this work better for you. Um, yeah, and there's uh, an email list on our website that you can, um, you can join for that. So um, one of the pain points for folks is that volunteers are uh, tied to events. And um, what are you doing? Um, and for, for a lot of folks, that, that doesn't work for a variety of reasons. Um, some folks have uh, a variety of volunteer um, organizers and they don't really want them creating events on the site or it's a lot of overhead and a lot of tabs to um, just set up a uh, uh, an event that you don't really need because what you're really after is the volunteers. So um, one of the things that we're looking to do is create a volunteer projects manage page, like manage events. And um, so some of the settings that folks have asked about, like um, how can I change I'm flexible to something else? We want to have a nice fat settings button that people can click to change settings like that. Um, we, want, um, we want you to be able to add volunteer projects without creating an event first uh, and attach them to entities other than events, maybe. Um, we want some widgets across the top to show you maybe um, you know, over the last few months um, how many volunteer interactions have you had or how many hours. Um, have you gotten your volunteers to commit to? Um, we need a spec for those widgets, um, and that's part of that conversation I want to have with everyone. Um, they're obviously nonsense. And um, you know, other questions like what columns should we have in this list of uh, volunteer projects? Um, this next one is uh, one of the things that Civi Volunteer does not do is uh, build a list on your website of all of your volunteer projects. So it's been mostly internally focused at first. Obviously, there are public sign-up forms. Um, but how do I see all of the volunteer opportunities um, that the organization has to offer? And so uh, we want to build uh, almost like a shopping cart style uh, sign-up so that I can sign up for multiple events at once. I can see the list of uh, volunteer projects and expand that um, and see. And the text is kind of small here, and we don't have a lot of time. So you're just going to have to trust me that they're good ideas in the yellow boxes. And we can talk about them um, at the BOF. Um, but uh, yeah, you should be able to easily filter the volunteer opportunities that an organization has, sign up for them, or put them all in a, in a, like a checkout 
uh, cart and then sign up for them all in one go. So if I want, um, this originally came up from uh, just a single event, right? And I have multiple shifts. And someone was like, well, I can do more than just sign up for that one shift. And I have to really fill out this form all over again. Um, so I thought, yeah, you should be able to sign up for multiple shifts for a project. But why limit it to that? Why not sign up for multiple projects, too? Um, and uh, other ideas we've got are um, uh, the, the user dashboard, letting people see uh, how many um, volunteer hours they've done. Um, and you know, humans are competitive. And if you can see you know, you're ranked uh, most, most volunteer oriented or whatever in, in your county, um, that means something to people. Um, It'd also be great to have people enter in hours that way. Uh, currently, the only way you can enter hours is, is the administrator does it. Um, and then the communications uh, we talked about a little bit. Um, you know, should people get notifications uh, when they get assigned to an event, or um, should my scheduled reminders have a lot more context than just the date? Um, and so those are some of the areas that we're we're focusing on. I want to I want to put up the list of of everyone who uh, contributed to this fundraising effort um, to make Civi Volunteer happen and to enable us to capture those uh, grant funds um, that were generously provided to the project. I especially wanted to thank um, uh, MNN, the Manhattan Neighborhood Network uh, in New York, for funding most of the work that went into 1.4, which are the features that. Um, I pointed out in particular here, and um, also friends of Georgia State Parks, um, who uh, made a significant contribution towards our match for this uh, fundraiser, as well as um, as well as funding the initial civi volunteer. Thanks. <laughs>